I finally got to see my most anticipated movie for all of 2024. And it wasn't this initially. Of course, we kicked off the year with Dune 2 and, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine in the summer. Two movies I was highly anticipating. But as we were getting into the rest of the year, that fall season, Anora became my most anticipated movie. From its premiere at multiple film festivals to all the hype from there and multiple friends telling me that this film is an absolute masterpiece and one of the best films of the decade all of the hype was rising all the hype was building that it yeah it had to become my most anticipated movie for the rest of the year and when the film started the first 30 minutes i was like this is good but i don't get it and by the end of the movie i walked out of that theater saying yep that's going to be one of my favorite films of this decade What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, I'm going to be discussing Anora. Anora is a young sex worker from Brooklyn who meets and impulsively marries the son of a very, very rich family. And once the news reaches Russia, her fairy tale is threatened as his parents set out for New York to get the marriage annulled. Of course, it's directed and written by Sean Baker, a very creative mind in the entire film industry. Every time he has a film come out, it's always one of those movies that you really pay attention to, and specifically the way that he tackle certain nuances in the American dream and their lifestyles. And this, of course, also stars Mikey Madison, which I think there are so many fascinating things to the creation of this movie. And for people who don't know, like what how this film all came about is that Sean Baker went and saw Scream 5 and all of us, a majority of us went and saw Scream 5. And when we saw Mikey Madison, I, I remember being like, who who the hell is this? She's really good in this movie. And every sort of time she's popped up in that supporting role, I've always wished that she would get that starring vehicle. And now with Nora, Sean Baker created this movie to give her that starring vehicle. And now to see her have it, it, it just shows how she is truly a star. And in so many different ways, Sean Baker has been trying to push through into the mindset of Hollywood, into the mindset of awards buzz. And I feel like this is finally the film that will push him to that next trajectory that many of his other films should have already pushed him to. But this is an all timer. And I didn't expect that going into this. I was hoping it would be. But even in the first 30 minutes, I was like, I, I don't get it. But by the end, all the themes and the nuances all tied together. Anora just is one hell of a special movie. And I'm so excited to talk about it today. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, please. And make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well. So everybody, before I actually get into my pros and actually dive into this review, I do want to just give a little bit of a warning. I do not go into spoilers per se and what happens in the movie, but I do talk about certain thematics in here that may allude to what happens in the movie. So if you want to go into this movie completely blank, save this video, come back and watch it later. But I do want to give you guys that warning. I don't want to piss off anybody, but feel free to enjoy the rest of the review. Kicking this review off now, there are so many thoughts that I have to this movie because this film really does feel real into the way that it was established, the way that it was crafted, created. Every nuance, every aspect, every character moment, every character interaction, no matter how bombastic and big or colorful or even gut wrenching it can be every single interaction and sequence and scenario that is going on in here does feel completely real and i think sean baker is one of the few directors in hollywood that genuinely understands of making you feel like a fly on the wall in all of these scenarios and he's done this in every single one of his movies so far Tangerine, The Florida Project, Red Rocket, and now Anora. Sean Baker is able to do with that fly on the wall approach is make you feel and see a different part of America that maybe you are not used to or maybe you do heavily relate to and can understand to a certain degree where that is coming from. And for me, it's like Sean Baker's entire career has really much crafted up to this because each and every one of his movies up until this point all deal with the American dream to a certain demographic in America. And that is for me one thing that I've been so impressed with is to see how he's able to been crafting those little elements in different genres and again having that thematical through line of the American dream for a certain demographic. And within Anora, he very much safely and brilliantly tackles sex workers. And he tackles the sex workers and the idea and the ideal American dream to them 
And as I said in the synopsis, there's a, a whole through line to this of this wanting to be a Nora's fairy tale. She wants this to be her Cinderella moment. She wants this to be her pretty woman. This Disney-fied moment of her finding someone that actually wants to be with her for her and not just for the sex, not just for the, the touching and all of those certain avenues. And that is, for me, I think the strongest element of this movie is the thematics. And when you really get that through line throughout the entire film and see this circle, this path that Anora Annie herself is on, I think is like one of the most brilliant pieces of the movie. And specifically as you meet her and see this fake facade that she kind of puts out there of being the sex worker and enjoying it and looking like she just loves doing it. But as you get to know her character and you get to meet Anora, that is where you get to see the true self of her. And some on-the-nose lines of her mentioning how she's always wanted to go to Disney World. And just those little tidbits just kind of like push that over the edge to where I feel so passionate and so excited to be able to like dissect this movie, especially on like as I was driving home from the film and like coming down from my hype and my high and being able to like piece together all the different things. I'm so impressed with, again, Sean Baker's writing in here because all of the little avenues just all really play a key piece. And again, it's this romantic comedy that in return, very, very, after it builds up, becomes this gut-wrenching thriller in a sense. Like think uncut gems in some departments of how stressful it can be. And then it becomes this completely devastating moment for her. And one that breaks through and shows this fairy tale wasn't all that it was meant to be. Which may come off as a spoiler for some, but I think it shouldn't. I think this is something that we expect from Sean Baker's movies. And the ending of this film is absolutely gut-punching. And one that I wasn't expecting. And like when it started, I, I, I sat there and I was like, oh, this is how they're going to end the movie? I don't know if I like that. Like I get... The ring around the, the, the cycle of this. But I don't know if that's going to work. And the final shot just worked. It was so brilliant. And I have to acclaim Sean Baker so much in this. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what other people also take away. That's why I can't wait to see what your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section are. Alongside this, I talked about Sean Baker as a writer. The direction here is also incredibly strong. The film is about two hours and 19 minutes, and it never feels like that. It blows by like a breeze, as well as you just always feel into this. Again, this film mixes a lot of different genres. It, it, for the most part, it's a romantic comedy, but I would more put it into the romantic dramedy pieces because there is a lot of really good laughs. I think this is Sean Baker's funniest movie to date. But a lot of those humor moments don't just come from like jokes. They come from real conversations that characters have that, again, feel real. And I feel like every time I talk about one of his movies, I mention that word real. The whole thing just feels real. None of it feels fabricated or fake. And if this is a fairy tale to come to be, it does feel real for the most part. You believe what Enora is feeling in here and just let's talk about that. Mikey Madison, who I, again, loved in all of her supporting roles, but this is a star in the making moment. I, I mean, they should just start writing her name on the Oscars now. And there's been some, a lot of brilliant performances this year, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more throughout the rest of the year. I just, this is like one of those once in a lifetime performances that I don't even know if she will be able to top this. I'm sure she will, but this is an incredible performance that is very out there, but very powerful. And to see how she again lets herself and shows herself to certain people. It is very emotional to see all of the build up to that. All that stress, all that love, all that chemistry you see building up throughout the entire film lead up to the ending. And she is so powerful in that. I just, I'm, I'm stunned by how incredible she is in this. And yeah, 
uh, absolutely incredible. But alongside this, it's not just her. I think the entire cast in here is like top tier, some of the best in this entire film. Like genuinely, this might be Sean Baker's best casted movie yet. I absolutely mispronounced some of these names, but Mark Edelstein, who plays the love interest to Anora in here, is just stellar. He's hilarious, but at the same time, so believable and a little bit cringy too. But again, it makes sense for the role that he is playing in. And you just can't help but understand why Anora somewhat falls for him. Even past all the money and everything that he's throwing at her, you can understand where she starts to go into this relationship. Alongside this, I mean, Karen Kargulin, who plays Torres Vashis Tovamuslin. Again, I am probably very much butchering these names. I apologize. Absolutely top tier, hilarious. And Yoro Brozov. And Yoro Brozov. It is one of the more important characters that I wasn't expecting to be in this movie. And some of his just little line deliveries mean the world in this. And for me, this is just everything. Ugh. Like, I, I, I'm so happy to be able to walk out of this movie and just be like, I'm so in love with it. A lot that I really want to dive into that's even more spoiler filled. And again, I might have already spoiled some things into this specifically the themes and certain discoveries that you'll make throughout this but i think that's also one of the things that i really like about this movie is the fact that we're all going to come away with different thoughts and different fabrications about the movie and i think the one thing that i do just want to also acclaim on anora is the cinematography the score the editing all of this is just tight notch this is one of my favorite films of the decade and truthfully, I'm just head over heels for the entire film. This is my movie review. These are my thoughts on Anora, and that is why Anora is one of my favorite films of the decade. It's a chaotic, colorful, stressful, and sometimes even sweet film that Sean Baker continues his American dream exploration in what might be his funniest and most gut-punching. Start writing Mikey Madison's name on that Oscar. I loved her in this. I love the entire cast. This is truthfully, as of right now, probably my favorite film of the year. There's more to come. But when it comes down to like, what are my top 10 favorite films of the decade? This is right up there with it. So with all that said, I'm going to give Anora an A+. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.